Alrighty everyone, we're back at the old station, Essentia. It says it's online, there are no hydrogen cars here at the moment. Um, I'm gonna show you what happens when you press the emergency stop um, at the station. Um, I'm about at a half tank right now, and I am going to uh, fill up a little bit because it's cheaper in Diamond Bar, and I just wanna do this for demonstration purposes show you how it is to use the emergency stop. So let's go ahead and open the fuel cap. Let's get doing it. This is the Placentia station. I used to come here more frequently, not so much anymore, but we're gonna use that today, stop sign. So let's put in our Toyota fuel, fuel card. Here we go. Take off the dust cap. So let's see, no receipt. Okay, canceled. Not starting off very well. Let's try it again. new uh, black um, nozzle cover, I guess. Usually this is blue. Okay, all right, let's just let's go here. Current price, $29.95 per kilogram. Transaction canceled again. Let's do it again. Let's see, let's give it benefit of the doubt. Maybe I'm clicking the wrong button. Entering the card. Remove the card. Okay, receipt. I don't want a receipt. Okay, let's try that again. No receipt. One moment. Let's see if it works again. The previous person paid $136. Processing, here we go, looking good. Zip code now. Let's see if this works, one moment please. Pump is ready, all right. So we're gonna take it off. It in here. Press pretty easy so far. H70. So we're gonna fill up, let's say, um, just a little bit. And then again, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'll uh, use that stop button. But typically, I'll let it run till I can get as much as I can. But Diamond Bar is five dollars cheaper per kilogram, roughly. So I'm gonna fill up mainly there, and I'm not needing to go anywhere far anytime soon. But I'm surprised there's no one here. Um, there's stations there. Then we go. So let's get to, let's say, $15 or so. I'm going to press stop now. Stop. And it stopped pretty quickly, if it did. All right, that was pretty smooth, pretty quick. So let's take this off. Push in with the back, pull with this side. Then it should come out pretty easily. Or so I thought. Let's try it again with the other hand. If not, I'm gonna need two hands. All right, perfect. There we go. Might be dispensing the rest of the hydrogen in the tube. Sale complete. $18 for 0.6 kilograms. Let's put the dust cover back on. See how much that got us. 
So I was just shy under the halfway point. Now I am uh, just about half. So I get asked, or uh, I see in the comments uh, how often or how do I get better mileage. I know there's clips or uh, screenshots up there of people getting some ridiculous mileage out of these cars. Um, I've seen anywhere upwards of a 430, I think it's the highest I've seen but even 400 is amazing to me and honestly I don't think I feel like those people that are hitting those numbers correct me if I'm wrong if you are one of those people you're probably driving in the city and you're stuck in traffic all day so that's my guess uh, but in real everyday driving where you're not stuck in traffic all day and you're taking the highway mixed with street I've noticed, generally speaking, I have made improvements, but my average range is anywhere from uh, anywhere from 320 to 340, give or take. Um, so I just wanted to share some tips that I do to get to better. Um, when I first bought the car, I used to use the BR, the regenerative brake function, much more actively. I used to be right when I think I need a brake soon, instead of braking, I'll use that regenerative braking function. Um, so yeah, I would typically do that, but I realized later um, through reading some of your comments and also um, just trial and error that that is not uh, the way to hypermile or maximize the range. So, um, and another tip that people have suggested is inflating the tires up to potentially 40 PSI. I generally don't do that. I know that does technically increase mileage but I recommend uh, keeping with the factory settings. Um, it's just for, when you account for variability of temperature and whatnot, I think there is a, there's a reason why certain tires are rated or ideal in certain PSIs. As it gets hotter, it expands, cooler as it shrinks, but I think there's good reason for that. So I, I stick for, from a safety perspective, I don't think the extra mileage is worth your safety, in my opinion. So anyway, long story short, what I do typically is not my, probably not too surprising to most people but I coast a lot um, but I will preface that by saying I am very active in checking my rear view mirror and my side mirrors just to make sure if I decide to coast and maybe be a little slower I'm not endangering anyone else and what I mean by that is the obvious is um, not brake checking or not brake checking but like stopping abruptly in front or behind people i try to make sure that if there's someone that is on my tail or like within a reasonable distance i do not try to coast as much um, i try to drive quote unquote somewhat reasonably um, but if there's no one i'll maximize that space and then i'll just coast so i i'll gas it very slowly and then if I see a hill coming, I'll just let off the gas and let the gravity do its work and then get back on the gas slowly, very slow, like not what you would normally do. It will take some time. Just think of your car as accelerating with like someone that's very sensitive to, um, I don't know, I guess acceleration in the back. You're carrying a VIP or something like you don't want to gas it too hard. So that's the way I do it. And even on the downhills or anything like that, um, I try to coast as much as possible. And even if I'm in heavier traffic, I try to read, I think this is generally good practice, but I try to read anywhere from three to four cars ahead. So if I see that people are braking, I'll let up the gas early and then kind of coast and then brake when I need to, when I get closer versus gas and then immediately going on the brake. So a lot, I feel like the key here is coasting. Uh, my suggestion is, well, one for etiquette is wash your mirrors more frequently if you're gonna decide to do that more often. I've seen it way too many times, not just with this car, but with like a Tesla. Uh, more often is they're coasting and in like peak rush hour and they're on like the way left lane and they're just blocking everyone. And it's extremely rude and not, yeah, it's just not, no road etiquette at all. If you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do that, regardless, I would say don't do that. Like 
try to keep up with traffic but if you're gonna do that stick to the right lane um, but yeah coasting equals checking your mirrors somewhat frequently and then um, making sure that you're not hanging anyone up or putting anyone else in danger by slowing down too much so right now I'm in the way right lane there's no one behind me um, and uh, I'm just coasting here so hopefully my mileage uh, will reflect that <laughs>